Hello, my name is Brian Pritchard and today I'm going to discuss the Weymouth Steel Corporation briefing, question one. I will first state the question itself and the challenge that exists for Weymouth. I will then provide a three-step approach for them to convey the good news and the bad news properly. This will include, the three steps will include understanding their audience and the implications of the news. It, the second step will include the planned communication strategy objectives that they should set and the third will be the communication of the message itself, indirectly or indirect. Then I will provide a conclusion and some takeaways. Some business messages involve good news for some audiences, yet bad for others. Here lies the question for Waymouth. What does this imply about how they should send their message for the good news and bad news to the employees? The first step they must understand who the audience is and how the implications of the combined news message will affect all the employees, not just one side, not just the hourly, not just the salary. Looking at the salary and the retained employees, if they get the message together, the good news that they're going to be receiving raises where they know their coworkers who are going to be let go, they're going to have a lot of uncertainty for their future as well. And that's going to be a lot of communication overload. Where on the other side, Hourly employees really haven't been mentioned by the upper staff that much, by the upper management or by Waymo. And they're having a, like, a communication underload. They need more communication on what's happening. The laid off employees, they're going to have a lack of buy in, especially if this message is together. They're going to see people getting raises where they're losing their jobs. I think it's very important and a need to a face to face conversation so the management can listen, empathize, and they can also persuade why these changes were made rather than in a letter format. Also, if there's a mixed message, mixed message there's going to be a show, showing of a lack of concern from the company and that's not following their values and beliefs and that's going to filter right from the employees, the customer publics, right down to the financial publics, into the media. So, and Waymouth is going to have a big problem with that. Then there's going to be a misunderstanding on the change communication because in prior they were getting newsletters. The hourly were getting their newsletters, the salary were getting their newsletters, and basing all the important information off of those. They're going to have a lack of under misunderstanding if all of a sudden they're going to get one letter with news, good news and bad news combined. The second step is the most important for the upper management group of Waymouth and the chairperson. They must understand that they have to create a clear and concise message to avoid rumor mills. Waymouth and the staff also must appoint a coordinator within the upper management group to control the planning of this message and how they're going to convey it. And this message, they have to understand that they're dealing with a high diversity of, and a lot of changes because on one side, firing people, letting them go. On the other side, they're giving them raises. Then they must prepare the news in alignment with the company's strategies, values, and beliefs. They must understand that the employees are always looking at this and they must follow this because this is what the employees are going to lead day to day. Then they must consider that this is not routine news. This doesn't happen every day. They just can't communicate this in a, in a letter or in a newsletter or any other format like that. This is a really life changing news for a lot of people. And then they must define the role relationships and figure out how they're going to create this message and what the content is going to be and how the flow delivery will be determined within the whole company network. It's really important on how they're going to figure this one out. So the step two is a really major, really important step for their success. Then the third step, after they figure out what they want to do, they're going to have to communicate the message itself and they can prepare the employees by doing some indirect uh, meetings and indirect communication and then follow on with direct communication. First of all, by using indirect, they can set the stage for these changes. By using the intercompany news, by having other meetings, mentioning how the economic downturn is a challenge, they can let the employees know, prepare them that there are already some issues that they're, the company is dealing with. There, then there can be town hall meetings that also highlight this and prior to the changes. This will impress to the, this will put a good impression to the to employees that the company is doing everything they can during the economic turn, downturn 
to try to pick things up. And then after things need to be communicated, there's start to need to be some face-to-face -face and some change champions created. This is really important because when these change champions are created, these are the staff that's going to stay on and the, and the people that really have to work with other people. And they're going to receive the good news and from the management, and that's really important that they receive the good news first and then the management relay that there's going to be a staff reduction and show concern and have these change champions really make a good understanding of what's going on because they're going to be the ones that are going to be high, they're going to have high influence and they're going to have high involvement of their other team members. And then with the laid off employees, there's nothing more important than a face-to-face -face conversation as much as possible because that's going to show a lot of concern and support for people that are losing their jobs and a life-changing uh, activity that's going to be happening. Then after everything is communicated, it is important to send out letters and these letters should be signed by Wingmo, the, the chairman itself, to, to show that upper management has supported these changes. The, the news, the good news and the bad news really should be sent out separately in separate letters even after that point because then it shows that there's no conflicting of the messages. In conclusion, and a few takeaways, it's very important that Waymouth and the rest of the corporations today as a society really understand who they're dealing with, who, what their audiences are, and what the implications are when they're, they're sending out their message. They must also create a communication plan and strategy and stick to it. They must realize that if they don't stick to it, uh, there's going to be a lot of confusion. Then communicating the message effectively and adhering to values and beliefs is a very important thing too. If Weymouth and a lot of companies do these simple tasks and communications, their results will be much happier. Thank you.